Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions, and welcome to another episode of EV Basics. This is the fifth in our series. We started off with how to get started with your conversion, vehicle selection, motors and controllers, determining the pack size, the battery pack size, and in today's episode we're going to discuss adapters, couplers, and battery containment. And then in our next episode, we'll talk about chargers and DC to DC converters. Once you've removed all the internal combustion components, you'll need to install things like the motor and batteries. We'll start with the motor because it's going to go in a predetermined position based on where the uh, internal combustion engine was located. An adapter mates the electric motor to the transmission. One side of the adapter mates to the motor and the other to the transmission bell housing. This is something that you can buy off the shelf for a lot of different uh, vehicle makes. You need to couple the motor shaft to the transmission and that's where the coupler comes in. It has to be able to mount securely on the motor shaft and then be able to support our flywheel and clutch assembly, which then allows your input shaft from the uh, transmission to be operated. And so we use three different types of couplers. We use a one-piece coupler, and we use a one-piece coupler that is an integral part of the adapter so the coupler is supported in the adapter housing with a couple of bearings. And then we use a taper lock coupler. And the taper lock coupler, coupler is a two-piece item. And one piece fits onto the motor shaft. And then the outer piece mates to the flywheel. And the two are drawn together. And as they're drawn together, the inner one tightens onto your motor shaft. It is probably the strongest setup by far. Allows you to have um, more torque and horsepower. And uh, is one that we use when we don't have uh, one of the others available off the shelf for a lower power conversion. Is the coupler. It's a one-piece coupler. This is our one-piece adapter-coupler combination. This is a taper lock coupler, both the inner and outer pieces. This is the outer piece that mates to the flywheel. Here's a motor with uh, the spacer ring which mounts to the motor. And then the adapter mounts to that. There it is. And then that's with the taper lock installed. and with the flywheel installed. We have a video that features the three different uh, adapter couplers that I was talking about. It, uh, it shows them being installed on a motor with the uh, flywheel and clutch assemblies. And so it's um, um, you know, a detailed explanation of the three individual setups. And so if you're interested in that, please email us and we can uh, uh, give you all the information on that video. In most instances, you will need a motor mount. The um, exception, you know, the early air-cooled uh, VWs and Porsches, but most vehicles, you'll need to have a motor mounting setup. And so we'll show you a couple examples of that. But it's not only to support the motor, but to uh, keep it from twisting uh, under load. So as you apply power to your drivetrain, that motor's going to want to twist. And so you have to have uh, a way to support that uh, torque as well as support the, the motor and keep it in place.
Battery containment is very important. And once the motor's in place, you can then start to figure, uh, in most cases, where you're going to put your batteries. The motor location is, of course, determined by where the original internal combustion engine was and where the transmission is. So if it's a front wheel drive car, front engine, of course, uh, your transaxle's in the front, and your engine was in the front, and so will your motor. And so that's dictated for you. The battery location can then be determined when you see how much room you have afterwards. And talking about battery uh, placement and containment, I recommend that you put the batteries uh, in an area that is easy to get to so that you can inspect them and tighten your interconnects if need be and so forth. Uh, stashing batteries in every little nook and cranny may work as far as putting them somewhere, but it's a little more difficult to contain them safely and it makes uh, maintenance a bigger issue. So. Remember when containing the batteries that it needs to be structurally strong enough to withstand an accident. You don't want the batteries flying around in, in a collision. Now, to withstand a major accident is, it might be a, a tall order. And, uh, and I've seen engines fly out of vehicles in major accidents. But what I'm talking about is you know, they need to be in there securely enough that uh, in almost all cases they will be stay in that location, they'll stay put. And that's important for safety for um, people both in and out of the vehicle as well as your, your batteries. If you're, I've seen electric vehicle conversions where they were in a minor fender bender and the batteries broke loose and shorted against their aluminum box and created all sorts of havoc. And so, um, plan for the unexpected when it comes to battery containment. As always, we thank you for watching, and you can check us out on the web at evforyounow.com, and we remind you again that if you have any questions or comments about this video, please do not leave them on YouTube. If you have comments or questions, email us at info at evforyounow.com, and we'd be glad to respond. Thanks. Hello, I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. You want to learn more? You want to learn about all the components in greater detail? You want to actually install the components and wire conversion? Test it and drive it? Well, you can. By attending one of EV for You's three day hands on conversion workshops. You will get a chance to learn, discuss, ask questions about all the components used in the conversion. Wiring techniques, hardware used, safety, how it all goes together, and much more. But we don't just talk about it. We go into the shop and install the components in a vehicle, wire it up, and test it. After testing in the shop, we test it on our test track and in the industrial park where we're located. One of the vehicles we'll be using in 2014 is our sand rail. It's a blast. So come join us for three days of education and fun. Meet people from all over in a beautiful setting while learning how to convert a vehicle from gas to electric. EV4U provides lunch each day at great local restaurants. 
After hours, you can visit many of the local attractions, like Shasta Lake, the largest lake in California. Shasta Dam, the second largest concrete dam in the United States. Shasta Caverns. You can take a dinner cruise on Shasta Lake. Take a walk on the Sundial Bridge. Visit Mount Shasta. There's night skiing available during the winter. Visit Bernie Falls National Recreation Area or go kayaking at Whiskey Town Lake. You can check out the source of the Sacramento River. Sacramento River is the largest river in the state of California, and you can see where it bubbles out, out of the ground. We've got world-class fishing, hiking, and biking, all within minutes of EV for use shop. So we we'll hope you'll join us. So visit www.ev4unow.com and register today. The class sizes are limited, so don't delay.